Let's solve a classic optimization problem where we are asked to maximize the volume of an open top box. Here's the problem from Larson's calculus. A manufacturer wants to design an open box, meaning it has no top, having a square base, so the base is x by x, and a surface area of 108 square inches, so the surface area of this box is fixed. We want to find the dimensions that will produce a box of maximum volume. So we are trying to find the length for the base. It's a square base, so it's x by x. We're trying to find the length of that base as well as the height which will maximize the volume of this box, given the restriction that its surface area must be 108 square inches. To begin this problem, we want to write what's sometimes called a primary equation. That's an equation for the quantity that we're trying to optimize. In this case, we're trying to optimize the volume, which means maximizing the volume. So we want an equation for the volume of the box, and that's pretty straightforward. The volume of the box is simply the length times the width times the height. In this case, the length and the width are both just x because our box has a square base. So length times width is just x squared. And then the height, of course, we'll just call h. And this is our primary equation. It's an equation for volume, which is what we are trying to maximize. Now, to find the dimensions that will maximize this volume, we need to use our calculus techniques. But in order to do that, we need a single variable equation for volume. In this case, we have two variables, x and h. So we need to solve for one in terms of the other. To do that, we use what's called a secondary equation. It's some additional equation that relates the quantities involved. In this case, that comes from the surface area because it's given to us that the box has to have a surface area of 108. So 108 equals, and then we need to write the equation for surface area. And what's that? Well, the area of the square base is just x times x, or x squared. And then each side has an area of x times the height, h. And there are four of those sides, a front, two on the left and right, and one on the back. So we have to add four, because there are four of these sides, and each one has an area of xh. So this is our equation from surface area. And it's pretty easy to solve this equation for h, which will give us the height of the box in terms of the side length of the base. If we solve this equation for height, we find that the height is equal to 108 and then minus the x squared and then divide by 4x. Now we can take this expression for h in terms of x and plug it back in to the volume equation. Then we'll have volume in terms of a single variable and we can use our calculus techniques. Plugging this expression for height into the equation for volume gives us this equation. Volume is x squared times that expression for height. Now one of these factors of x will cancel out with this x in the denominator, leaving us with one factor of x still out here, which gets multiplied by 108, so 108x, and then that factor of x out here also gets multiplied by the x squared, so minus x cubed. Now, one of the factors out here canceled with the x in the denominator, so all that's left in the denominator is 4. This is our equation for volume. And you may prefer to write it like this, just carrying out that division by 4. So now we know we've got the volume in terms of x. Coming back to the surface area equation then, this does give us a domain restriction on x x is the side length of the base of the box, so certainly x is greater than zero. If the side length of the base of the box was zero, it wouldn't have any volume at all, which certainly isn't going to maximize the volume. And similarly, x has to be less than the square root of 108. If x was equal to the square root of 108, then looking at our surface area equation, we can see that the base, which has an area of x squared, would account for all of the surface area. 
which would force the height to be zero. And so, again, the box's volume would be zero, which is certainly not going to give us a maximum. So we are concerned with these x values between zero and the square root of 108. And since this is what we would call an open interval from zero with the parentheses, meaning we're not including zero, to the square root of 108 with a parentheses, since this is an open interval, we don't have to worry about checking the endpoints. Really, we already did by discussing that the volume would be zero at those endpoints, so for sure we won't have our maximum there. That means all we will need to do is find the critical points of this function for volume. So let's take the derivative. We'll call it v prime. The derivative of this polynomial is pretty straightforward. It's just 27. And then power rule here, this becomes minus 3 fourths x to the power of 2. Now we want to set this equal to 0 and solve for x. And here's that little bit of algebra. We take the derivative and set it equal to 0. Then if we add 3 fourths x squared to both sides, this is the equation we get. Multiply both sides by 4 thirds to get rid of this fraction, and we have 27 times 4 thirds. 27 divided by 3 is 9 times 4 is 36. So x squared is 36. That means that x could be plus or minus 6. However, certainly the side length of our box's base won't be negative 6. So we can disregard that. The critical point is at x equals 6. That's the one that we are interested in. We could then check that indeed the function has a maximum at x equals 6 by using the second derivative test. If we take the second derivative of the volume, 27 is a constant, so that goes to 0. And then negative 3 fourths x squared becomes negative six-fourths times x. And if we plug x equals six into this second derivative, certainly we will get a negative number, which means the function is concave down, and indeed x equals six is going to give us a maximum. One more time, that second derivative is negative if we plug in x equals 6, our critical point. Since the second derivative is negative, the function's concave down. So indeed, this is a maximum, just like we were looking for. Finally, to answer the question, what dimensions will produce a box with maximum volume? Well, the dimensions of the base of the box have to be 6 by 6. But then what about the height of the box? Well, we can figure that out by just plugging x equals 6 into our equation for height. Remember, we previously used this surface area equation to find that the height was 108 minus x squared divided by 4x. So let's take that equation and plug x equals 6 into it. So again, we're taking this equation we previously solved for, that the height is 108 minus x squared divided by 4x. We take that, plug x equals 6 into it. That will give us that the height is equal to 108 minus 6 squared divided by 4 times 6. And this gives us a height of 3. So the dimensions of the box are 6 by 6, those are the dimensions of the base, by 3 as the height. And this is all in inches. And that's how you solve a classic optimization problem. We begin with a primary equation, which is an equation for the quantity we're trying to maximize. Then we typically have to consider some secondary equations which relate some of the involved quantities. In this case, that was the surface area relating the base dimension and the height. Often this is necessary so that we're able to write the primary equation in terms of a single variable because sometimes it's not already in terms of a single variable. Once you're able to rewrite the primary equation in terms of a single variable, you need to make sure to consider potential domain restrictions on that single variable because the extreme value you're looking for might occur at the endpoints of the domain. It might not occur at the critical points, it could be at the endpoints of the domain. So you need to make Make sure to consider those. In this case, those domain endpoints actually gave us a volume of zero, so certainly that would not be the maximum for this problem. With that addressed, all that was left was to find critical points. In this case, there's no value where our derivative doesn't exist, so we just set it equal to zero, solve, and then use the first derivative test or the second derivative test to establish if that 
critical point is a maximum or a minimum. In this case, since the second derivative was negative at x equals 6, that established x equals 6 as the maximum we were looking for. And then we were able to finish actually answering the question, which asked for the dimensions of the box. Hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Hearts and heavy minds weighed down by the catalyst, sinking to the stomachs that plummeted at the accident. Shot off all my habits to addicts, ripped by a catapult. Pulled apart the patterns in man that stood as a manifold. Man of many pains with a number that he had to call. Calculate the damage of himself and what's collateral. Being told he's not enough until he swallows Adderall.